Yo, what's going on guys? DJS here, CollectiveKicks.com. Wanted to bring you guys a video and give you guys a review of this pair of sneakers right here in particular. This is a Nike Roshi 2 and wanted to give you guys my thoughts on these and if they're worth buying as well as the Flyknit uh, Roshi 2 and kind of show you guys a comparison to the original models and then a couple other pairs of sneakers out here for comparative purposes. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button, show your support and then subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Uh, I'm trying to hit that 200,000 subscriber mark and appreciate your guys' support. On feet video, uh, towards the end, these two will be. So let's go ahead and get into it. Not going to beat around the bush. Is this worth it or not? I'm still on the fence, to be honest. I've worn them for two days straight. And they're comfortable. Don't get me wrong. They're It's a comfortable shoe. It's um, it's a attractive shoe. I think it's like all, all around the aesthetics of the shoe is great. But is it worth it? it I don't know. It's tough to say because this was a staple still is a staple for most people and actually a lot of people when i posted pictures of the roshi 2 most people were saying they're obsolete at this point because of um the uh, adidas boost line and the ultra boost and the pure boost and this one was definitely a shoe that was a weekly sneaker that was in everybody's rotation at least the, that i can that i know of like this is just one of those staples but uh, the ultra boost came along and now that kind of reigns supreme over this product um, and then, so if you have so many different options on the market, is the Roshi 2 going to be worth it? The price point of the Roshi 2s are $90. The price point of these, I think, were once, or $75. So $15 increase on this for something that's not exactly like a Roshi. And I think that that's a part that I have a hard time with because I expect that the Roshi 2 would be basically an improvement on the Roshi 1. And in some areas, they did improve it. They hollowed out the bottoms and made it more... Um, attractive and added some extra layers of cushioning. It's like a triple layer cushioning system. But smoke and mirrors, in, in a sense, when you look at that, like I think that's a great improvement. But the upper is the part that, that I'm having a hard time with because you see some of the stuff is traditionally the same. Like they have this cut on the back section here. They kind of made it a smoother, sleeker cut. They made the uh, like the swoosh kind of a pillow cloud instead of just a little iron on. And you know, the cuts here are fa fairly similar, so it kind of gives you that traditional uh, cut on the other one. Kind of improved lace uh, holes and, and reinforcements. But the part that I hate the most, or just not am not comfortable with it yet, is the tongue. The fact that they, they created it with an attached tongue versus the detached tongue. That to me is just probably the weirdest thing, and I don't know how I feel about it yet. I really like the detached tongue. And the feel, and you guys already know this from like the Ultra Boost in general, and this might just be my personal opinion. If you guys have a different opinion, please weigh in the comment section. Um, but I personally like a detached tongue on my Roshis, and I think that that having the attached tongue, it makes it something different. It makes it feel different. If I wanted an attached tongue on a pair of sneakers that are Nikes, I would have gone on with a Hirachi or something else. If I wanted something that fit like a sock, I would have got something like these, which I do have. Um, and these are the, the free 4.0 or whatever. Like shoes and these ones are great you know it's a great shoe uh, flying in on these but if i want a roshi which like for me there's three distinct things that make this shoe um what it was and i guess i should hold this one up number one which is my other complaint is the the toe box area i love the fact that this was kind of like a free flowing area where you you could wiggle your toes as you walk or whatever it was it wasn't very restrictive at all and that was one of the main parts that drew me to that the part two, the, or the, the new ones, might be able to have that come back if they changed it and used different materials like the mesh that I was used to on the original pair. The second thing was the detached tongue. I think that that definitely was one of the, the factors that made this a comfortable shoe is you can loosen them up and make them as loose as you um, would like. And uh, it made it for a more of a relaxed fit. And the third thing, and the, probably the biggest miss in my opinion on the Roshi 2 is the insoles. This to me was a staple for the Roshi 1. The fact that it had the ribbing on the, the insole, I don't know what it was. It was kind of like massage for your feet. And they basically took that and it's like they weren't listening to consumers or just didn't consider it. I don't know why, but this is what we got instead, which is basically just a regular insole. It does feel like kind of memory foamish comparison, but so it's probably a more expensive material, but I really was hoping it would be in the same kind of ribbed pattern. And maybe I'm just being nitpicky. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And if, if I'm totally off base by thinking this was a staple, because to me, this was the thing that really drew me to the shoe and the comfort. So it's kind of more of a memory foam insole, insole but 
it's just not as comfortable. It's not the same. It's it's online in line with other pairs of sneakers that we we have out there. This being one of them, I mean, it's kind of like these. It's even different than this, as you can see the materials. But ultimately, it's kind of a miss to me because of that. And you know, this is the very first pair of sneakers that I ever wore without um, uh, socks on, and it was because of this insole. It was super comfortable, and it was just like ultimately it was just a great pair of sneakers because of that i thought so that was probably the other big miss but i do like the improvements on the midsole i think that's great and the aesthetics of the shoe i think look great as well it does look like a revamped version in the best way possible minus the the tongue one thing that i will point out now though as we transition to the other shoe this is the fly knit version and i wanted to do this in one video instead of two i could have done this in a second video but this Flyknit version is basically like a spitting image of the original, as you can see. Same cuts here, same cuts here. It's like basically an improved version um, of the original. This is pretty much the same. The only difference is the Flyknit on the toe box area is super different. And then the back heel cage area right here is different premium materials. This one has the natural motion, but they do have Roshi ones with the natural motion as well. And it has more of a sleek point on the back and then the free uh, front section. They kind of went away with the free front section with the new ones here and then made it kind of a, a little bit more domed um, on the back side so it's not as pointy on those. But what I wanted to point out is this shoe versus this shoe is completely different. So they took that that shoe and that shoe were the same basically just improved uh, materials and the uh, fly knit. This one is a, literally a completely different shoe and unfortunately I only have this in the women's size which the wife really likes this pair but they didn't have men's sizes where I was um, trying to buy these. At discount and so i haven't had to try them yet but this one does have the detached tongue and i think that that's pretty awesome it has this crazy fly knit material that with the different colors and stuff it's just kind of like a i don't know it just looks really crazy on the eye and, and honestly i thought it was i didn't know if it was ribbed or what but you could see that it's like actually the bumps right there on it so it does stick out it's not just an illusion the way that it's on there it looks really really comfortable the the swoosh is kind of in the shoe here as well and then it's just all like one piece uppers also as you can see sort of right here there's this there's a cut right here which is similar to the the other pair and then they kind of have the same shapes on, as the original one but it's literally the whole thing flying it so this is a, a pretty big upgrade from this one if you ask me this one looks like a huge upgrade from this one unlike the other pair you have the same soles as the uh, regular version. So the soles are pretty much exactly the same for the $130 version versus this, uh, the $90 version. And kind of reinforced cage area on on the Flyknit version on the back, kind of same pull tab sort of stuff, no branding on the back um, section. But all in all, it's pretty much an improved version. So I definitely think this one might be a better step up. And the price point, was 130 on these and they're 130 on these. So they didn't go up in price. And the other ones again were 75 and then 90. So they went up on the regular price. So most bang for your buck, I think, is the Flyknit version. And I like the fact that it has the detached tongue. The insole feels like it's kind of more, I can't even pull it out, it's glued in. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't do the, the Roshi route as well, which is again, my favorite part, as you can see on this one. Um, but you can buy these ones. I think that that's probably the, the the best thing to come out of this for consumers is you can buy the Roshi ones now for super cheap. I've seen this one, which was retail 130, as low as 50 bucks. Um, and I'll link them in the description if you guys wanna buy any of these four. Um, but the reason why I have these ones out here is because it's like if you want to go with a different type of a product, like the Roshi to me was a complete lifestyle product that was pretty cheap and affordable. And now it's stepping up where it's a $90 price point. I think these ones are $100 and these are the Lunar Glide 8s, which wasn't like, it was just a huge re revamp of the uh, Lunar Glide 7s. But if you want a better, like supportive shoe that has Lunar Lawn cushioning and so on, like you might as well go with this shoe. I'd rather have this one probably than this one when the price points are similar. Um, and a Lunar Glide 7 to me is even better price because you can get those for like 60 bucks now or something like that. So... That's my personal thoughts. I think that they kind of hit the marks on some things, the aesthetics and everything, but the d attached tongue was a miss. And then this insole change was a huge miss, which could be a simple fix if they actually brought the other ones back. Best um, upgrade though, I think was the, the fly knit um, version of these. The one thing that I will say 
is I wish that they made this fly knit material similar to this one where it was a stretchy material. You can see both of them have kind of that ribbed sort of look, but this one's not as stretchy as the one on these. And so and then you can get those for under hundred dollars roughly like on sale right now too. So there's just so many other competitive products on the market within the same brand that if you're going to make big changes and big updates, it's great to have new options, but are those options worth buying re instead of other ones? It's, it's hard to say, I, you know, my feet are my feet, your feet are your feet. But I would go into the store and try on multiple pairs because if you like a sock light fit, I think this is definitely the way to go instead of the Roshi um, because of this. And I don't know, the stretch material is really nice. If you like more of a st stability, um, this is definitely the way to go with the uh, the Lunar Glide 8. And if you like more cushion, then like the Ultra Boost is the max cushion. It's just an amazingly comfortable pair of sneakers. Um, for the daily casual pair of sneakers, these ones are great though. I'm not knocking these too much. It's just, I had high hopes. I'm sure a lot of consumers out there did. And they, they just changed a couple things that I think that uh, I'm not sure if I'm on board with. I might have a, an updated video later though, because they are really comfortable shoes. It's just... It's just um, not what I was um, looking for. Let's go ahead and show you guys what they are on feet. So weigh in in the comment section. I really want to know your guys' thoughts on these. You know, I posted some pictures on Instagram a while ago, and a lot of people were like, man, those those shoes are going to be obsolete because there's the Ultra Boost is already out there, and that's definitely a superior product. It's more comfortable. The NMDs are 130, and it's probably more comfortable than the uh, Roshi 2s. So, I mean, when, when you have, like, the Flyknit Roshi 2s, at 130 and the NMDs in the regular version at 130, I still think the Flyknit Roshi 2s is a superior product. If you talk in Primeknit Roshi or Primeknit um, NMDs versus the Roshi 2s, of course they're going to be better because the the materials are are more expensive and uh, it's a more expensive shoe at retail. But for the price point, I think that 130 is a is a decent price. Uh, you'll definitely be able to find them on sale soon, and um, I think it's a worthy opponent like for other sneakers on the market. But um, but the regular Roshi 2 at $90, I would definitely wait for those to go on sale to be able to purchase them. Uh, 70 bucks, I would probably say, is, is the price point for me uh, on a pair of those. But, um, but yeah, dudes, I'm curious to see what you guys are saying in the comment section. So weigh in and let me know. Am I crazy? Do you guys really like the Roshi 2? Have you tried them on? Are they a big improvement from the Roshi 1s? Again, I think the aesthetics, they look amazing, but... Uh, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of the, the attached tongue. And it doesn't feel that liberating, like, loose, relaxed feeling that the Roshi 1 had. It's more of, like, the high-tech version that's, like, sock-like fit and and trying to be something that it wasn't originally. And I think that that's where they, the mark was missed. But that's my personal thoughts. Weigh in again in the comments. And thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys some more videos soon. Peace, guys.